Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to show you what is inside this very popular Dina Frips Pontus 2 DAC. So you're going to see the main board and the encapsulated power supply, whether it is worth double of the price of the entry Aries 2 DAC. A lot of you may already have owned this Pontus 2 DAC and is pretty interested to see what is inside. So today I'm going to open this ah, 12 kilogram of DAC and show you. Okay, let me show you the back. Right, so to open this guy, loosen this two little screw here. I already have done it so that you, you guys don't have to go through the hassle of me removing the screw. And you can pop this top cover open. And it's made of full aluminium, anodized in silver color. In fact, the Pontus 2 is made of aluminium instead of metal sheet. So the front panel is aluminium, side panel are aluminium, as well as the back cover are aluminium as well. Let me put this cover aside. So under the hood, you'll see a big piece of PCB, printed circuit board. And it comprises of another module right over here. This is a DSP module, Digital Signal Processing module, where it processes all the digital input signal uh, connection from the upstream. And there's this FPGA here, a few programmable gate array that process this digital signal. It goes through um, the filter setting, the slow filter and shut filter, FIFO buffer and reclocking. The digital signal will send from the FPGA via two little small but very important galvanic isolator. These two pieces are the high speed optocoupler that isolate the digital signal before sending to this to CPLD. It's a microcontroller that processes the digital signal from the FPGA and this digital signal processed by this F CPLD will be sent to this small little chip over here and small little chips over here for the R to R circuitry. So you notice there are four resistor ladder here because the, all the Dynaflips DAC are true balance. The signal is processed um, left channel here, right channel here, both positive and the negative phase, the true balance signal will output to the XLR and RCA connector right away. So you may ask, where's the output stage? There's no output stage for Dynafrips DAC. Dynafrips believe in the shorter path, shortest path topology. So there's no output stage. The signal is drawn from the R to R ladder directly to the XLR connector here. Because the Nafrips DAC are true balance, it is highly recommended to use the XL connection if the downstream equipment are true balance. Right, you also notice there are a lot of capacitor here. It, we, we call it a capacitor farm because it, literally there are a lot of capacitor here. So the capacitor responsible to further filter the DC output from the encapsulated power supply underneath this main board. I'm going to show you later. And, and uh, hang on a second, there are one group, two group, and three group of power supply. So the two group of power supply here handles the digital portion. The, there's another group of power supply here handle the analog portion. So you can say that the power supply is uh, isolated from the digital and the analog signal. Right, so this is the main board. I'm going to show you some method to remove the main board if you are interested. Right, so before we go into that, um, the power supply module is encapsulated underneath this main board. The power supply is the power is sent by this um, copper standoff to this main board. So um, Dynafrips use this screw-in method to, to transfer the power from the power supply to the main board. So by losing this um, all, all this screw right over here, you will be able to remove this board. But of course you will need to remove all this um, um, nuts and screw at the back as well. I already have done it so you guys don't have to see me doing that. So what I will do is loosen these two screw. I lift two screws so that you guys can see the action of me loosening the screw. Right, put it aside and the other screw. Put it aside. Okay, before we remove the main board, maybe just let me show you how to remove the DSP module. So in the past, um, we have this Arma Nero DSP module that is released in year 2017 and 18. In year 2019, we have a new DSP module. 
it was um, released in year 2019, I think somewhere around June. We did provide this DSP module to allow the customer to upgrade the older pointers um, to the newest, newer DSP. This is a DSP and this is the, the heart of the DSC where it processes all the digital signal. And you, don't, you do not see this DSP module available on our website. It's because this little FPGA chip here, the cost, the cost increased about 400 times Sorry, 400%, 400% compared to pre-pandemic. So this module become very costly that no longer economical for the customer to upgrade. Right, so that's another topic for another day. So this is the DSP module and let me put it aside. Right, so this was the, these were the two uh, governing isolator that I talked about. So it's optocoupler, it's high-speed high optocoupler that isolate the digital signal to the R2R network. Right, so once we loosen this, all the screw here, and we have to loosen this flat cable as well. As you can see, the main board is moving already because it is not, not holding at the back. Let me remove this flat cable slowly. So the flat cable um, this is connected to this uh, front panel. The front panel, um, there are a couple of buttons here that allows you to control the deck as well as, uh, let me fill it the front. So the front panel has buttons and LED. This, there's, a, there's this front panel, we call it control board, that is connected to the main board and the flat cable is the connection between the main board and the front panel. So loosen this flat cable, we'll be able to pull this main board out from the pontus right away. Let me do it really slowly because I do not want to damage this board. Right, this SL connector is a bit tricky. Right, okay, I think we have it. Here we go. This is the Pontus 2 R2R to R main module. And there's this two, um, I will call it a resonant control mat here that did not flip put in so that it reduces the vibration as you tap on the board. If you do not have this two, Vibration control mate, control mate here. The PCB will, is is prone to vibration. Right, this is the main board. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? Yeah, I, I like the look of the capacitor bank, as well as the resistor network. Let me put this aside. Right over here. Here we are, the encapsulated power supply. So this this is a box within a box. So I like to call it a box within a box. So this power supply module, there are two transformers here and uh, the, up, the, the transformer is responsible to convert the AC to the DC and there are, there are some capacitor bank in this as well to further regulate the, power supply, the DC power supply and send the DC um, from this copper standoff to the main board. Okay, I'm not sure whether my small little screwdriver here is strong enough to remove the IC, IEC connector. Right, let me flip it to the front. This, these are the cable coming from the IEC connector where it sends the AC power to this power supply module. So let me loosen this so that I can take this power supply module out from the chassis. Right, just nice. So let me pull out the live, neutral and earth cable from the IEC connector. One, two, three. Okay. So you notice there's this yellow color cable here. So this yellow color cable is the earth cable that connects the earth cable of this IC connector to the main board. Okay, here we are. But but at this point in time, we can't remove the power supply from the chassis. It's because the power supply is screw to the back panel or I would say the bottom panel by this um, but there are eight, eight screws in total to secure this encapsulated power supply to the bottom panel so I already removed most of the screw just let me just bear with me I'll remove two of them so as we remove the screw the power supply module will drop 
will, will fall by gravity so I need to hold it by using another hand unscrew the second last screw so we use, we use allen key so this is a m3 m3 screw with 2.5 mm allen key um, you'll be able to un loosen this, this screw okay the two screw is removed and here we are okay okay this is a chassis of the Pontus DAC and we have everything removed already the power supply module as well as the main board and of course aluminum side panel about 12 mm I think more than that um, I think 15 mm, mm thick front panel and the back panel so it's pretty heavy by its own but of course this guy will even be heavier let me put this chassis aside okay here we go the encapsulated power supply of Pontus 2 DAC AC power comes in from the IEC you'll notice a couple of relays here Dinafris Pontus 2, Venus 2, Terminator and the Terminator Plus comes with this auto AC power switching so what this what Dinafris does is there's this sen sensing circuitry here automatically detects the AC power supply be it 120 for the US or 240 for UK, Europe or like me, Singapore so the automatically sensing circuitry will detect this AC mains and switches a couple of relay here to send the correct AC voltage to the transformer and the transformer will power up and send uh, and, and step down the AC step down the bigger AC to a smaller AC and there are a couple of I'm not sure whether you can see this there are a couple of um, diodes here it's, it's not a normal diode these are showcase diodes that converts the AC to DC and these are the filter caps that filter the DC voltage so there are, there are more things there more, more things right over here is linear power supply is I call it super regulator so it regulates the DC power supply to 3.8 volt 7.5 volt and plus minus 7.2 volt, 7 volt so the 3.8 and the 7.2 are for the digital session and the plus minus 7.2 volt are for the analog R to R session so this portion are for the digital this portion are for the analog and the DC power supply will be sent to the main board by using this copper standoff so it's pretty amazing that Dynaflips managed to put in this linear power supply encapsulated in a box within the Pontus 2 chassis so the, big, the, big, the biggest question is whether this um, will make the sound of the Pontus 2 better compared to the Aries 2 I think the answer is yes in my opinion um, we know that the quality of the power supply is important and by putting the power supply in the box have it shielded underneath the main board away from the R2Rs and the digital circuitry um, is one of the reasons why the Pontus 2 sounded a lot better than the Aries 2 okay I think that's about it I hope you enjoyed the video see you next time bye bye